generally if you talk about the convolution of two signal then uh, what does it mean how we convolve to the signal so how convolution is coming so that you will see it here that in order to find a distribution of a direct random variable so you you will get a convolution pattern and so uh, convolution is exactly not part of this course uh, it might be part of signal and system uh, you might have a very good uh, introduction over convolution uh, in between, if you need further regarding convolution, I will give you geometrical and uh, application that uh, other intuition of convolution in detail if there is a need of that. So uh, again, uh, we need to recall uh, what was the derived distribution. So two situations we had already discussed. Uh, forget about here uh, discrete random variable. I am talking about continuous framework. Discrete also uh, at the time uh, we need to talk about discrete as well so that concept we had already discussed so suppose we are having function of one variable y happens to be g of x then we had already seen that that x is given random variable with a given probability density function that means we know what is f of x that means probability density function of x it is known to us our job is here to find distribution of y that means probability density function of y then uh, i had already given two approach to find so among the two approach one was implicitly going through jacobian approach that how to find this one it is we are finding it we know that y happens to be function of the random variable x okay so each y if you take each observation of y that would again a function of some observation of x okay so uh, from here you can say that x is actually inverse image of y this a small x happens to be inverse image of y i am saying saying that it was it is inverse image of y i am not saying that it is inverse invertibility it is not guaranteed always Invert, invertibility is guaranteed only in case y, g happens to be uh, bijective function if g is bijective in nature then we can say that uh, uh, g would be inverse g inverse will exist otherwise if it is not invertible simply call it inverse image in short i would like write i double i inverse image call it i image or better call it inverse so that concept is coming and branch wise easily you can define inverse image uh, how smart that, that one is directly coming from math one you might be aware of that so uh, we are having this scenario from here what we do uh, you can call this new uh, approach uh, g inverse of uh, y or inverse image of y you can call it uh, simply h of y as well you can give another name so all these are coming from the given situation all these are coming from given situation a smart you can handle the given information as much as possible so how you find derived distribution of y it it would happen to be uh, distribution of x with argument h of y okay times we multiply with jacobian of the transformation so it is transformation of one variable to another variable okay so here jacobian would be what it is simply uh, i may denote it like this way partial information but it is uh, coming as a situation like uh, our primal primal variable happens to be x and the transform variable is y so you can denote it for general perspective you can denote it by dou x by dou, dou y but here if you try to see here y is a single variable x is also single in nature so simply it will be uh, what partial information would be not here simply we will say that it would be dx by dy you can say that or in simply further you can write it x is what x is actually h of y so d of h of y you can write it so all these concept we had already discussed d of h of y with respect to y so this is the way to uh, compute derived distribution of function of one variable so another concept we had already discussed that when we are talking about transformation of uh, two jointly continuous random variable x y to another random variable pair of random variable uh, jointly continuous random variable uh, u 
W. So we had already discussed this as well. Okay. Or some another notation I might have taken Z or something like that. So just take it like this way. So here uh, in this uh, uh, framework, we know the joint distribution of X and Y. We know what is the joint distribution of X, Y. Okay. It would be given to you or somehow it would be computable. You can compute this one from the given problem. Easily you can compute all this one. Now our job is to find derived distribution of okay, U and W. Okay, that is the perspective you need to find. Okay, so what would be here? So that you need to find. So again the same similar approach is coming. How you can find it? You can find it by uh, here. What is that? Here for each uh, observation of U, you can say that u is function of some function of uh, call it g1 of x y because g is already given to you here this through g mapping if we are g is that ultimate transform we start from x y plane to u w plane so that you know okay so from here uh, we can come up with uh, that you each observation of u happens to be g1 of xy and each observation of w happens to be g2 of xy and that means g is here vector variable function having two component g1 and g2 and from here easily again in the same framework inverse image framework you can write x happens to be h1 of uh, U W and Y happens to be H two of U W. Okay, so here G is transforming X Y plane to U uh, W and H is transforming vector function X is transforming back u w plane to x y so from here we can easily write derived distribution of u w in term of derived di distribution of x y as with argument what would be argument here it would be h1 of uh, u w h2 of u w times jacobian Jacobian we are taking in modulus framework. I had already told that this quantity would be always positive. Jacobian is a matrix. Uh, in case of uh, function of one variable, it is just a scalar number. So we always need a, a positive scene. So here we are putting here modulus in case of uh, function of one variable. But here in case of uh, more than one variable, two variable or three variable, we are considering determinant of the Jacobian okay so here this uh, Jacobian it would be uh, we are transforming x y plane to j, uh, w uh, u w plane so it would be a matrix so here Jacobian we define it that means we are transforming x y to y z uh, sorry x y to uh, u w so this can, can concept is coming uh, we are transforming x y to u w so it is a jacobian matrix simply what we call it so you can write it it is a matrix like this way x is h1 simply you can say say that so uh, dow h1 with respect to dow u dow h1 with respect to w second row would be dow h2 with respect to u and last entry of second row would be dow h2 with respect to w so this is the jacobian matrix easily you can find you can generalize it to four function of two three variable four variable you can generalize as much as uh, possible you can go uh, as per your requirement so i have already explained what is the derived distribution so uh, those things we had already discussed in previous class but just for recap we come up with this one and coming to today's uh, class so first i would like to talk about uh, outline so here uh, 
we will talk about uh, derived distribution for transformation of random variable from the general perspective then uh, we will take uh, transformation of a specific type that means linear type that means here u w would be linear transformation of x y linear transform it, it would be linear function of so u would be linear function of uh, x y that means simply you can say that alpha times uh, x plus beta times y and w would be alpha 1 times x beta 1 times y w would be alpha 2 times x plus beta 2 times y you can take a fine co coefficient as well there is no any issue but we are not taking that so simply here this we are calling it linear transformation of uh, linear transformation of x y uh, so that concept is it is coming you can write in sort in matrix form like this way uh, here remember that random variable we always denote it by capital letter so some kind of transformation matrix is coming so it is coming as a linear transformation from linear algebra you know that how we define linear transformation so with respect to any linear transformation over a finite dimensional space we can always find matrix of that transformation so matrix would come here matrix time uh, first random variable and sec second random, random variable so this simply we call it a, a representation of linear transformation of uh, two variable to uh, another pair of two uh, variable okay so th this is the representation of linear transformation what we call it and here we will see very a specific pattern to find derived distribution with the help of convolution that one is taking convolution form so we will see that how it is happening so coming to that uh, derived distribution for transformation of a random variable so we are recalling it again here so suppose we are having x and y both happen to be jointly continuous random variable and uh, just example you can take it uh, for uh, independent and both are jointly continuous and x y both are exponential and independent as well and what is the uh, parameter parameter is equal to one lambda equal to 1 so easily we can find joint distribution of x y okay what is that easily we can find it would be just exponential exponential of minus x minus y so very easy to find okay and it would be this uh, joint pdf of x and y it would be defined on just first quadrant of r2 plane and outside that it would be zero everywhere you know from the definition of uh, x and y exponential uh, random variable okay so we are having explicit form of joint distribution of x and y next what we have to do we are coming with transformation of uh, x and y to z w so we are transforming x y random joint random variable x y to uh, a new random variable pair of random variable z w we are transforming to uh, like this way how z is equal to x minus y w is equal to x plus y so our job is that we have to find what is the joint distribution of z and w and later other things would come here and then we have to find this once we are having joint distribution of z and w then we have to find joint distribution of z no, joint distribution of z distribution of w then conditional distribution of z given w all those things we have to find it okay so it is very easy to find joint distribution of z and w through Jacobian approach so in order to find that first we have to see the transformation for each observation of z and w so how it is transformed from x y plane to uh, z w plane okay so that we see that means each observation of z that a small z we denoted by and each a observation of w we denoted by a small mm, w okay it happens to be a vector function g of x y g of x y uh, that means having two components g1 and g2 and uh, here g1 and g2 are defined by g1 of uh, x y it is defined by x minus y and g2 of x y it is defined by x plus y uh, from the given situation it is defined by okay and just do little bit algebra here uh, from here you will easily see that you will get inverse image of z and w in term of that x happens to be z plus w by 2 and y happens to be uh, w minus z by 2 easily this through this uh, algebraic uh, uh, manip manipulation easily you will get this relation this inverse image you will get okay very fine 
so once we are having inverse image we can easily find jacobian of the transformation as we had already defined jacobian of the transformation it happens to we are going from xy plane to uh, zw plane so that's where jacobian of transformation is defined as uh, dog of xy to uh, dog zw so simply find the derivative of this uh, this one is simply you can call it it is h1 function uh, this one is h2 okay so differentiate h1 with respect to z it would be what 1 by 2 then differentiate h1 with respect to uh, w again then again you will get 1 by 2 okay fine first row you got second row how you will got again differentiate h2 differentiate this h2 with respect to z then what you will get here negative sign is coming so minus 1 by 2 will come and differentiate this h2 with respect to w then you will get 1 by 2 so simplify it and then uh, find the mat determinant of this jacobian matrix what is that it is 1 by 2 you got the jacobian factor as well okay so just apply the derived distribution concept easily you can find uh, derived distribution of z and w what is that we are multiplying the given distribution of x and y joint distribution x and y with argument uh, with respect to h1 and h2 and we are multiplying with this factor after that after simplifying what you will get you will get the joint distribution of z and w it is just exponential function of negative uh, w with coefficient 1 by 2 this is the uh, joint distribution of z and w easily you got it by simplifying this uh, result okay you got so we are having explicit form of joint distribution of uh, uh, z and w that means there are, we got the derived distribution now our job is not done we will look for further question here what are those so we will find marginal pdf of z and w okay so let us first find marginal pdf of w okay that uh, derived random variable uh, w happens to be function of x y okay so how we can find it so we are having joint distribution of z and w so just we apply the principle of marginalization that means we need to marginalize here what z in order to get marginal distribution of w okay so integrate it with respect to z over minus infinity to infinity but we have to focus on what we have to focus on the variability of z we we have to focus on the variability of z so while uh, getting explicit form of so we we had already z was what z was defined as x minus y and w was defined as x plus y okay and we had uh, further notation that x was after simplification uh, we, we had x was z plus w by 2 and uh, y was z minus w by okay that one is very simple it is not uh, not uh, easy uh, not difficult uh, here easily actually just uh, what uh, it is difficult to go back in this slide uh, during recording mode uh, actually there is no option to go go back so uh, here you can see it here easily so what was the joint distribution of xy would you like to recall what was the joint distribution of xy it was e to the power minus of x plus y simply you can say that this one was the joint distribution of x y you can say that this one was uh, given or we can easily deduce this one okay so everyone might be with me uh, aware with this one our intention is to find joint distribution of z w so through that uh, derived distribution perspective we come up with the relation that 
it is equal to joint distribution of x y with argument h1 of uh, i am just leaving uh, uh, argument of h1 that would be uh, zw and argument of h2 would be that that would be also zw h1 is z plus uh, w by 2 and h2 is z minus w by 2 you know that it that derivation i am calling it and uh, this one is h1 i think everything is clear to everyone okay and times jacobian determinant of jacobian so here all about that it how you do how you can compute here you are substituting you are writing x in term of zw y in term of zw okay that you are willing to get so what would be here just simplify what is x plus y what is x plus y anyone would like to recall it is equal to w are you getting or not yeah so easily you will write this factor would be what it is the power minus w yeah and what is jacobian factor that one is 1 by 2 so that's where joint distribution of z and w is equal to 1 by 2 times e to the power minus w is it clear to everyone or not oh fine now we are coming to talk about uh, marginal pdf of w so how we can find marginal pdf i told that all these scenario i discuss okay and here uh, you can focus on how to come up with the limit of z in which uh, the integrate function integrand function it would be non zero we know that uh, this one is uh, this one is non uh, it is not uh, possible to be non zero everywhere it is non zero in certain region that we have to find and we know that uh, f of xy it is non zero in the first quadrant when xy belongs to uh, r plus r2 plus r2 plus and then this simply say that variation of is x is from 0 to infinity and variation of is y from 0 to infinity jointly i am talking where the density function joint density function is non zero the similar pattern we will argue it here and from there we will get limit of z it will vary from where to where where this component would be non-zero when z is taking value from minus w to w. Outside that, the integrand would be zero. Outside this integrand would be zero. So that's where your limit of z it would be minus w to w. If anyone is willing to see how it is coming, then you have to just manipulate this one. Manipulate this from here. Easily you will get limit of here apply the concept here simply it say that x must be greater than 0 and what is x here z plus w simplify it x must be less than infinity likewise simplify this concept as well and from here easily you will see that it would be non-zero from minus w to w and easily you you will get uh, marginal pdf of w likewise you can get marginal pdf of z how you do marginalization of uh, uh, joint density of z and w so little bit manipulation is here just all these are part of what we call analytic approach you need to do a lot of practice here uh, that that one is directly coming from math one you have to play with inequalities so inequalities are very simple to play uh, smartly you play and you will get all those limits okay and here what is happening that uh, uh, in order to find marginal density of z again you marginalize uh, joint density of uh, w and z and w uh, that means you are integrating this one with respect to w from uh, minus infinity to infinity and here what is happening that here two situation would come one situation would come that when z is uh, taking value from minus infinity to zero another situation will come when z is taking value uh, zero to uh, infinity so if when z is taking value from minus infinity to zero that time the limit of w where the integrand would be non-zero it will take value from minus z to infinity and just simplify it 
you are getting this value and when z is taking value 0 to infinity the limit of integration for w it would be z to infinity and just simplify you are getting this so here this bifurcated uh, form of marginal density of uh, density of z you are getting it and if you are willing to put in in unified form then simply what you do here z is coming here minus z is coming so if you want to bring it uh, these two together what modulus z will come okay modulus z will come we know that uh, here but uh, simply uh, negative z here we here it is z is positive okay okay then what is the presentation of uh, modulus z we know that it is taking form that uh, it is equal to z when z is greater than or equal to 0 and it is taking negative z when z is negative why because modulus function is always happens to be greater than or equal to 0 so that's why we this so due to the definition of modulus function we can easily find um, the marginal pd of z it is one half times exponential of minus uh, modulus of z so this is the marginal pd of z so we are having marginal pd of w we are having marginal pd of z so uh, we can further find uh, other pdf as well like conditional pdf also we can find so everything we have we can find whatever distribution you are needed you can find all those and uh, the, a there is a specific name for this distribution uh, we call this distribution is uh, gaussian uh, sorry not gaussian it is exponent double exponential or laplace distribution so it is very much essential from the perspective of uh, sparse kind of model like if you are studying uh, higher dimensional uh, problem then a sparsity situation is coming so the prior is coming through that laplace distribution so this we simply we can say that it is a laplace distribution modulus term is coming something it is like exponential distribution exponential distribution sorry gaussian distribution it is gaussian distribution is dealing with uh, that a standard uh, normal a standard gaussian distribution dealing with exponential of minus x square or z square better call it z square but here laplace is dealing with just modulus in plus of minus z square it's dealing with modulus so something like that laplace is also having very important role application you will see later that in uh, high dimensional problem you will see that so all these were part of uh, derived distribution for transformation of two random variables now we are coming to discuss about uh, a specific transformation that happens to be linear in nature linear transformation so here we will see some uh, convolution approach so everyone might be aware of uh, how to define convolution so there would be two kind of convolution one convolution would be discrete another would be continuous convolution so discrete convolution is dealing with summation and uh, uh, continuous con convolution is dealing with uh, uh, integration so two different form we will see it it depends upon what kind of uh, uh, signal we are taking whether we are taking discrete signal or whether we are taking continuous signal so that's why uh, con such kind of convolution is coming so here we will see why convolution is needed so here it is needed why because suppose we are having a, a, a random variable x with distribution i mean here x may be a discrete or continuous so having distribution f okay uh, f of x okay y is having another random variable having distribution uh, call it g of y g of y okay so what is happening that now we come up with a new function as a function of x y as a linear function that means we are summing these two random variable x y so z definitely it is a linear function of x and y then our question would be what is the distribution of z what is the distribution of z okay so this distribution of z we can find it as a convolution of distribution of x and y we'll see it here so it would be as a convolution of distribution of x y so uh, here i'm I, I'm not mentioning it uh, X Y whether it is a discrete or continuous. I'm not mentioning. mentioning. I will mention it as per uh, just uh, discrete version and continuous version. I will discuss. So it is simply uh, here if uh, you are summing to any two random variable, then uh, you can find distribution of sum of two random variable with the help of convolution approach. So remember that it is a convolution approach uh, uh, only in case of uh, linear transformation we'll see it here so here i am talking first uh, derived distribution for transform of uh, random variable 
as a linear so we are taking here discrete situation so suppose x and y happen to be uh, two discrete and independent random variable discrete random variable so it will have probability mass function okay not probability density function probability mass function it will have so we have to find the probability mass function of some of these two random variable if you are summing two discrete random variable again it could be discrete in nature so we have to find what would be the distribution of z what is the probability mass function of z that we have to find so let us find it here it is very simple to find how we can find so here just uh, focus on z and the, we know that probability mass function of z is defined as from the definition of probability mass function it is talking uh, value of probability mass function at z is equal to probability that z is observing value this a specific z okay and now here this a specific z we are saying that it now it once we are taking a, a specific z it is fixed now so but what is variability where is variability we observe variability over this z so what is this z it is actually function of x and y that means z is actually equal to x plus y so that's why we are replacing here this z by x plus y because we can observe variability here okay so this probability value of probability mass function at z is equal to probability that x plus y equal to z and here we know that uh, this this one is already fixed so what is happening that here focus on this uh, anyone would like to recall what does it represent if i try to ask here what does it represent x capital x plus capital y equal to a small z what does it represent anyone would like to suggest what would be this Just, uh, this one is a um, high school question anyone would like to answer what would be capital x plus capital y equal to z what would be this just try to answer it. it it is a very simple question neil would you like to answer it if you are listening me prashant or harshit anyone would like to answer what would be geometrical intuition of capital x plus capital y equal to z a small z anyone don't know i feel very sorry for all of you if you don't try to in, see intuitively all these these are very simple thing and just uh, uh, high school kind of things here x is variable in nature y is variable in nature here z is fixed so what does x is taking value along horizontal axis y is taking value along vertical axis so variability is there so what does x plus y equal to z would represent it would represent a straight line whose equation is given by x plus y equal to z this is the, that means in order to find distribution probability mass function of z you are confined along this line only because z is at a time z is fixed so you are confined to this line that means you are observing joint variation of x and y but remember that along this line only here x y vary in the in this jointly vary in this uh, taking observe value along uh, in this plane x y plane but we are not taking value uh, jointly from uh, all section of the plane we are taking value along this line so that's way concept here what will happen that we are we are uh, we know that sim joint distribution of x y just we try to find it along this line so how we find joint distribution we find it through multiplication rule so that's just post uh, observe x first after that uh, once we are observing x uh, try to observe y so that way that should probability of observation of x is coming first and once we have already observed then condition probability of y given x is coming z is remember that we are already fixed but here uh, we in order to engage all the point along this line we have to vary for all x and here x and y taking value in a discrete fashion so that's where summation is coming so that's where here this joint density has been 
decompose as a product of these two probability the probability of x and probability of y given x okay and we are summing for all x in order to uh, in order to uh, include of uh, all the uh, association of x y along this line so that's why we are taking this summation so simply what does it talk about it is actually discrete combination we will see it here just try to focus on further we will simplify simplify it here so if you try to simplify it further what will happen it is already given that x and y are independent to each other so conditional density of y given x it would be just equal to density of y that it is observing just we need little bit simplification x is already we have already observed so it would it would be fixed so we will take it uh, right hand side then right hand side it would be probably that y equal to z minus x would come here and it is what uh, independent so conditional will not affect so conditional situation will not affect so uh, this probability would be equal to probability that y is observing value z minus x so that's why we are writing this component so here i'm summing it uh, with respect to x so if you focus on this one uh, what does it it is talking about observation of x and this one is talking about observation of value of y that means it is the probability mass function it is related with probability mass function of x that's why we are writing p of x and this one is related with probability mass function of y that's why we are writing probability mass function of y okay so that's where here but argument is z minus x we are summing so this is what if anyone would like to suggest this one is actually discrete convolution because we have taken discrete random variable so we are getting it in order to find uh, probability mass function of x actually it is a convolution of uh, probability mass function of x so simply you can say say that it is convolution so call it uh, probability mass function always we denote denoted by p and density we denoted by f so we can say that it is convolution of uh, probability mass function of x discrete convolution this one is the discrete convolution what we call it discrete convolution of x and y in order to get uh, probability mass function of z so that we are getting it here so here i will take one example okay so example here i have taken that we are we are taking two random variable x and y both are having poisson distribution okay poisson distribution is a discrete uh, distribution what we know and both are independent to each other then we are defining the sum of these two random variable uh, x plus y okay z equal to x plus y then easily we can claim that z is having a poisson distribution with argument or parameter lambda 1 plus lambda 2 likewise this one is one question and uh, uh, one other example is take any two binomial random variable x and y binomial random variable x is having uh, parameter n1 and probability of success p and uh, binomial random variable uh, y is having parameter n2 and uh, probability of success p are both happen to be independent to each other then if you define a new random variable as a sum of x and y z equal to x plus y then this would be again a binomial random variable with parameter n n1 plus n2 and probability of success p so how we can establish this one with the help of convolution so we need convolution here so convolution even here also you can relate convolution with respect to partition if you know the geometry as well partition of an integer because integral value or sometimes if uh, x y or uh, uh, is taking integral value then some of integers again ha happens to be integers so in such kind of situation you partition approach you can introduce introduce here okay so here just we what we do in order to find joint distribution of sorry distribution of z what you do you just do discrete convolution of x and y density of x and y uh, okay do discrete uh, convolution uh, uh, so what is uh, here I'll first talk about uh, this one second problem that uh, when x and y happens to be binomial in nature so it is very simple problem easily you can find so we try to simplify this convolution and if you are able to simplify then it is taking very simple form this is the simple form easily you can find it so directly you got the answer of uh, uh, that uh, what is the protein mass function of z you got it through the convolution approach this one is one example